we gotta start right. with number one, dude. What was your very right. first rescue, man? Because everybody has so, it. Right. So I guess maybe unlike some of the rescue specialists that you interview, they're sort of they're they're in a like a, a small group, you know, like sort of two man rescue team, or maybe even a single person like you guys rescue swimming going out ski patrolling. You are the first responder, but then you've got this team that backs you up, you know, and it off a lot of the rescues take quite a bit of manpower anyways. So um, my rescues are both independent, but also followed up with lots of help. So my very first call as a ski patroller, you know, I'd done my first aid course, but I'd never seen a live patient, you know, or sort of a real patient before, uh, was simply a person with a broken wrist that rock walked into one of our, our ski patrol sort of huts where we, where we stage and, and readiness. And I walked in and um, uh, a woman that had sort of was kind of shadow or I was, the, I was her shadow, Fiona, Fiona Durkhole. If she ever listens to this, she's a superstar and she knows it. Um, uh, nice what, walk, walk, walk in and, uh, and here's this person with a broken wrist. And she's like, Hey, this is, this is your patient. Go ahead, you know, and sort of fumble through a primary survey and secondary and to figure out if you're going to splint and, and ask your questions awkwardly and, and do all that. So that's really, I guess my like first call. Um, you didn't even but have then, to go anywhere. They came to you. No, it's I didn't. So nice yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. And then it may be that same day or at least that same week. Like that would have been my first week uh, patrolling. Uh, as a, That would have been in my volunteer year. So I did that volunteer year. I wasn't even full time there yet. And then um, a, uh, a spinal injury was my sort of first, I guess, like more complicated one. You know, just someone with like neck pain from hit some big jump and landed on their like neck and back and you're like okay so packaging on a spine board and toboggan so luckily the the progression was like a, a little bit slow and you have all this support you start developing your your sort of process around how you see patients and again um kudos to this to the ski patrol i had all these incredibly experienced people to model your um your sort of rescue style after your first aid style and some like really, really high level paramedics that work for us on the ski hill and doctors and other longtime ski patrollers. And so you're picking these ways of talking to patients and approaching calls um, from other people's examples. So it's so a really great deal of learning that happened there. And then if I guess if I go to like my, my first um, big big injury let me actually look at uh some notes oh yeah so in the upper alpine it was a cold day probably minus 15 and um i wasn't the first one on 15 but we got celsius or 15 sorry yes my yes mine's 15 uh, yeah mine's 15 celsius so will you do you okay, have a just converter check that shows up on the screen <laughs> do you have a celsius converter that you shows know what? up on the screen I, at fahrenheit i should uh, you know what i'll add it just because you mentioned it so nice, it'd be right nice. right so it's there. cold yeah yeah perfect so yeah it's, it's cold it's cold crisp sunny day and we get what's for us we call it a code three call so it's a more significant accident it's a you know sort of an immediate response and um the first person goes down there and it's this unconscious uh female maybe early 20s she's been snowboarding on a relatively flat road uh but it's hard it's hard packed day it hasn't snowed in a while and she's so snowboarding. And as you know, as a snowboarder, sort of going straight and flat can be a bit tricky. And so she hooked that heel edge that lots, lots of people will understand if they're snowboarders. Yep. And so then heel edge, which flips her backwards and then immediately smacks, smacks her head. And she's unconscious, seizing, vomiting on the, on the ski hill. So, you know, the call comes in and it's quite obviously quite serious. And so then there's a, a, a significant response of ski patrollers. And again, this is what I'm talking about. We're, we're lucky to sort of have this ability to layer doctor, uh, ACP, advanced care paramedic, and and, and ski patrollers uh, onto that call. So you could easily Hold have on. like- You've got a straight up doctor coming out? It's on the mountain? Yeah, yeah. So we can talk about that in detail as well. Yeah, so we've had for oh, many years- Oh, and, snap, and the, dude! The, the, the Black Home Ski Patrol for sure has has been a pioneer- in developing sort of this doctor slash uh, advanced care paramedic program. Unfortunately, the care paramedic, the advanced care paramedic program has sort of fallen off um, a little bit with some logistics around how the companies run and stuff, but we still have a, a longstanding doctor program. Yeah, so we can have quite advanced care on the ski hill, thank goodness. 
that's um, crazy. All right. So I didn't mean to cut you off. So man, no, that's okay. That's a trip. So, you know, so the whole, you know, so the cavalry shows up to this call and I, I showed up after the fact to bring maybe some additional O2 or something. And I was on a snowmobile and you got there and it's like, okay, so this is the first sort of real serious call. And it's, it's challenging. It's cold. She's uh, unconscious and seizing and clenched up. So no uh, OPA uh, head injury. So probably elected to no NPA back then. Um, the vomit's like freezing on her mouth. So, she, you know, she's sort of critical. You're sort of trying to bag her um, in those cold temps. Nothing really works. I remember specifically helping maybe hold the IV bag, watch the paramedics start the IV. But then as soon as you run the fluid through the IV tubing in that temperature, right, just immediately froze, even though it's like normal saline. So now you got a frozen IV line. You're trying to heat that up with a hot pack. So, you know, just the, the complexity of those types of calls in that environment is, um, is difficult. And at the same time, uh, super engaging, I guess, to keep me doing it for 26 years. Cause you're just, you know, it's this sort of this teamwork, these challenges that you learn to work around, or at least anticipate, you know, maybe now you would, you would already anticipate that and try and pack that tubing and some, something heated or protect it. Wow. You know, even, and so then they're trying to give just um, like a IV hub that they had just in the, I think they were in their left woman's uh, arm, like AC fossa at their elbow, the vein there. And then just trying to push drugs through it, like a needle into just a, um, an IV port or hub. But of course, in that temperature, even the, the, con, the cooling effect of the metal needle you know, you just immediately freezes in the needle as you try and push it through. So just challenging efforts to do a recess on this woman that's crit that's critically injured. Wow. Um, they did, if I remember correctly, they they did finally uh, manage to get an IV started and then paralyze her and get her intubated and um, and then medevaced her off the ski hill so helicopter land relatively close by. And uh, get, you know, sort of get her packaged up and stabilized the best you could. You know, at that point, really, the ABCs are the, are the key factors in those type of calls in, in that yeah. environment. And, um, and off we went. So, yeah, that had been sort of my first real significant call. It wasn't particularly mine, but I was involved in and, and really set the stage to just be like, oh, man, this, this job's got lots going on. And those, those type of calls, the frequency isn't super high. But um, we've certainly seen plenty of that type of thing over the years. And yeah, wow. the team, the teamwork, I guess, is the real, the real draw there. And there's some incredible mentors that have come along the way in those calls that I, I admired so much um, in my early years. And I was like, I want to be able to handle patients like, like that, you know, like yeah. those people. Um, oh, man. and then getting to, getting to work with directly with advanced care paramedics back then and, and the doctors, which are mostly eMERGE docs, you know, you all, you also end up, you know, as a, just a BLS person, like on the ambulance, you're sort of doing your best with your patient, but there isn't sort of this collaborative nature. Like there is ski patrolling, you sort of layering in a doctor and layering in this, this long time Arabac ambulance you know, paramedic that also works on the Hill, um, to see their style and the way they approach patients and stuff. So the, the learning curve there on the ski patrol has been something that I've greatly valued. Um, yeah. and then uh, I, I ideally you sort of take the things that you like from individuals and, and try and be a, your best version of, of their versions. And so ideally, I guess the people that go ahead or, or move on and are, are, um, a boiled down and consolidated version of the awesome people that went before us. Dang. At least, at least ideally that's the way it would work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. Man, that is so cool.